How's it going, guys? Mark Angelo here. I just uh, wanted to pop in and speak my mind about a few things that I um, I've been reading on Twitter and just just provide my two cents as I usually do, whether you want to hear it or not. You know, I just I like to provide my my two cents. I, I speak. On the grounds that, you know, I I was a detransitioner, you know, uh, six times. Six times was the charm till I decided this was madness, crazy. Um, it um, makes absolutely no sense, you know. Um, to me now, you know, I did what I did for various reasons and those reasons I've spoken about in the past. Shame, guilt, religiosity... Uh, feeling that although I had done everything that I needed to do to feel comfortable in my skin, um, I felt that it may not have been enough. And at times I even felt like an imposter. But I didn't go deep within myself to understand why I would have these types of feelings. And after reflecting healing and and going within i realized that it had nothing to do with me but everything that was placed upon me by society by my uh religious upbringing by the religiosity that i got myself into and by many of the groups that <laughs> bring this type of thought process into consciousness. You know, there are a lot of people that battle transsexuals because they don't agree with what we do, whether it's because they have religious beliefs or whether they, they have their own stigma or their own angst against those that go against the system. I mean, there's many various reasons for this, but nonetheless, detransitioning was not the right thing for me because I having detransitioned six times and every time I was in that detransition mindset trying to return to what, you know, what couldn't be returned to. I mean, once you transition, you're on hormones for X amount of years. There's just no way ever of going back. And so you're going to be battling with yourself. You're going to, it's almost like a reverse dysphoria that takes place and a reverse obsession. And so now you are obsessed about looking like you looked before, but it will never really happen because once secondary characteristics kicks in, there's just no way to ever get back to your original state. So in that angst, that's why you see a lot of these detransitioners now that are so unhappy, they become um, alcoholics. You know, there's several uh, well-known detransitioners that are dealing with a lot of problems. You know, they're dealing with money issues. And, and I believe one of the reasons they really get involved in this whole D-trans community is to try to see how they can now profit from this. And people are very quickly to bring these D-transitioners into their platform. But when it comes to supporting them monetarily, they're not really interested because they're just being used as pawns. You know, that's that's all... That's all we've ever been for any group, our pawns to push whatever it is that you're trying to push. But nonetheless, you know, I, I look at a lot of these detransitioners now and, and their common theme is that continual safe hatred, you know, self-hatred. It's the same self-hatred they felt before they transitioned. That's what led them to transition. And then they continue to have the self-hatred for whatever reason, they don't feel like they belong, they don't fit in, they're awkward, they're different. Many neurodivergents in, in that community and in the trans community as well. Um, and this leads to extremes, whether you transition, whether you detransition, and basically never solving anything. Because until you actually deal with a core problem, and there's many core problems involved here, um, gender might just be a very small part of it, but there's deeper issues that we can really point out, like low self-esteem, um, sexual molestation, anxiety created by childhood trauma, 
there's just a slew of different things. And some people have a variety of different things that ail them. And, you know, others are just one or two particular um, systems, you know, or symptoms of um, what creates the so-called dysphoria or the so-called not being happy even after you've done everything that you needed to do. You don't fit in still. So it's a constant search. Nonetheless, uh, I was looking at one of the detransitioners' comment. Um, he, she, I guess now, I don't know what they go by. Um, they're detransitioning. They were in FTM. Now they're attempting to get back to their female state, which they're finding rather difficult. And, and <laughs> you will find it difficult. Um, they're saying that there's going to have to, there's going to have to be some sort of changes into how people view things because how can a woman with all those male characteristics be welcome into a locker room or a restroom, um, even though they could be wearing a dress, they still very much look like a guy, and you know. This is really deep-seated, and it goes back, you know, when gays and lesbians were being bullied and attacked and ridiculed um, for being who they were, and I believe transition, or the transsexual, uh, was born out of that, because people just want to live life, fit in, be happy, be loved, and so all the shame that was thrown at the LGB back in the day, pretty much gave rise to the T. So to answer this person, you know, um, Casey Miller to be exact, you, if you really want to detransition and you're willing to do the work, because detransitioning takes a lot more work than transitioning ever did. As I know for me it did, those six times. I mean, I transitioned like that, it was like, you know, add a little hormones and a little removal of certain things and that's it. Voila, well, the other going back is not so easy. But it can be done. I could tell you because I did it. You know, they were, or she was worried about how you get all the documentation back. It's not hard at all. You go in for your legal name change and you go in and have the doctor say that you are what you are. You know, you're assigned female at birth and you could prove to the doctor and they write you a letter. You take that letter to the social security office and you know, you change everything back and you get your old name back. You have to legally go through the whole process again. It's the same thing, but in reverse, I did that and I did it several times, you know? And, um, so if you want to do something, you're going to do it. Now, if you're trying to find excuses for not to do it, and, and I un totally understand because having detransitioned six times and not feeling comfortable as a detransitioner, I opted to retransition and this is how I feel comfortable. We have to do what makes us feel comfortable. So if that means you going into a female locker room and a female bathroom um, and having to shave your beer on a daily basis, sometimes twice a day, like I did, um, and just putting on a wig and putting on makeup and doing what you have to do, if that makes you feel good and makes you comfortable, then you will do it without any, any problems. You know, I did it. Was I comfortable? No. That's why you see me presenting as who I am. And that's Mark Angelo. And whatever people want to say, yeah, I know I'm not biologically a man. I am biologically born um, female. And uh, with, you know, progestin-induced virilization. And this is how I feel comfortable walking this earth. And I will never again let anything, any shame, any religiosity, any social stigma get me to do what makes society comfortable. Because ultimately, we're here to please ourselves. And if you can love yourself and please yourself, then you're good to no one. But I say this to Miller, you know, you really 
if you really feel that you need to detransition because you're not happy as a trans guy, um, for whatever reason, a lot of people detransition because the hormones don't agree with them. Well, I lived for a couple of years, still transition, but I, I stopped hormone because I was cleansing my body. I was, I was doing a whole spiritual plant base. I uh, didn't want to put anything synthetic in me and I was still presenting as Mark and you know, the beard may thin out a little bit. The body hair may kind of go away a little bit, but I was still Mark, you know? And so if it's hormones that's deterring you, you could medically de medically not take hormones, but you could still identify as trans because hormones is not what makes a person trans. I mean, those are the modern amenities that we have been given to be able to alter ourselves, to make ourselves feel comfortable. But... Bottom line is you want to do it, then you've got to do the work and then you've got to deal with whatever comes your way. But if you really don't want to do it and you're not comfortable and, and you remember the reason why you transition in the first place, then I would question your detransition. I would do a lot of soul searching and understand that detransitioning is not going to bring you happiness. And a matter of fact, it's going to bring you a lot of unhappiness. I know that's what it did with me. And so, you know... It's all fun and games at first because you got all these people telling you that a girl and we support you and, and all that jazz. But in the end, if you're not happy, it doesn't matter how much support you get, how much cheerleaders you have behind you, nothing's going to make you happy. you got to look what it is that allows you to get up every morning and look at yourself in the eye in that mirror and find that peace within. So I think one of the reasons detransitioners are going to fail dramatically because they're still trying to find this, this mana, this, this perfection, this life that brings them joy and happiness, and they're doing it with external things. And they're trying to please people. And this all goes from the fact of your religiosity, how you were raised, what you believe is right or wrong, you know... Um, that's going to that's gonna destroy you because you're chasing your tail like a dog chasing its tail. You're never going to find that happiness and you're never going to find that peace only, only until you accept yourself and find what it is that makes you happy. Not what makes society happy, not what makes your aunt Louisa, who's a Christian, happy. You know, not what you've been programmed from a very young age. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and all that. BS that I no longer believe in. And it's fine if you want to believe in that, but, you know, spirituality is a lot more complicated than that. So until you, you find that peace in the reason that you get up every morning, you're not going to ever find peace by belonging to said groups, by being a pawn for gender crits, a pawn for Christians, a pawn for conservatives, because that's all I see the transitioners as. And, you know, there are many who just want to get back to their life. You know, one detransitioner that I do respect is Joey. You know, he, uh, he takes responsibility for everything he's done. Um, he's not trying to find handouts. He's not trying to, you know, rile up a bunch of Christian or gender crits. On the contrary, he's not very happy when his videos get used and abused as most detransitioners videos and, and, and messages get hijacked by these said groups to push their hateful trans anti-trans agenda. So yeah, it, it's, it's, and it's really funny, you know, cause you, you, I go on their pages and read things from shapeshifter to Michelle to Watson to Casey Miller to Bell. It's all the same theme. Oh, and, and Chloe and her little videos that are so directed by individuals pushing the agenda. You know, it's predictable. It's disgusting. It serves only one purpose, and that's to destroy transsexuals. They're not there just to share their story. They're there and being used as pawns to destroy transsexuality, trans medicine to make us all look like we're crazy, we don't know what we're doing, you know, to discredit us 
And that is all the transitioners are being used for. A discrediting force, a tool, a pawn, you know, to just make the rest of transsexuals look bad. And to not to say that transsexuals need any help to look bad because like with any group of people, there are many who are not well, who got into this for many reasons other than the real true reasons of gender dysphoria. There's a lot of fetishism. There's there's a lot of different things, but we can't put everyone in the same box and say that all transsexuals are fetishers, that all transsexuals um, do this for, for whatever reason. You know, there are very few and far between that transition for their own inner peace and happiness. There's many re different reasons, but we can't put everyone in the same box like most gender crits try to do. You know, they just create this drama behind this in this picture they paint that trans women are, you know, are fetishes or fetishers or whatever. And, and they just want to get into women's spaces so they could do all sorts of weird things. It's like, look, transsexuals use restrooms to alleviate themselves just like everybody else. You know, they're not the greatest place to go into. We just go to do our thing, get in, get out. And that's that. So, yeah, um, Another detransitioner who had just like made this Twitter thing, Michelle, um, is getting ready to get bankrupt, I guess, has $100 in their savings account. And now they're reaching out and asking for help, asking for money. Um, you know, we, we've got to look at the bigger picture. If detransitioning is going to send you into the negative, you know, and... Or the same thing goes for transitioning. You know, if you're going to transition and it's going to send you to the negative, it's going to ruin your life, ruin your job chances, then it's something you really have to think hard and long about. You know, because if you can live life without transitioning and if you can live life without detransitioning, uh, I suggest that you really uh, look into it. Because if detransitioning is going to send you into poverty, then is it really... The thing to do because detransitioning is not going to make your problems go away. Magically, your old self ain't going to appear and life is not all of a sudden going to be happy ever after. It's, it's going to be a lot of heartache, pains, and, and problems. So, you know, think it through. You can't sit there and think people are your bank accounts and they're going to bail you out from your decisions. You know, you can't think that you're going to be able to sue the medical system and, and make tons of money from this. Although most detransitioners, that's their thought process. They think that they're a victim, that somebody did this to them, and now people have to pay. No, you did this to yourself. And the same way you're now heading the other way, and you're seeing your bank account deplete because, A, you may not be able to find a job now with the, your detransition phase or whatever it is that you're going through, um, you better think it through because no one's going to bail you out. You know, it gets old after a while. It gets old, this constant victim mentality, asking for help. And, you know, we all have times in our life where we ha have had to ask for help. But imagine, you know, how old it gets. You know, what's that saying? Fish and, and companies stink after three days, you know. Uh, there's going to come a time where this whole detransitioner thing is no longer going to be that interesting for people. As people go through, it's, they're like toddlers with their attention span. Oh, here's the bunny rabbit. Oh, here's the squirrel. You know, they just, they're all over the place. Um, but you got you to gotta think about your future, your well-being, not only your emotional and physical, but also your financial well-being. Um, where do you stand in all that? whether you're going to transition or detransition. Because people pretend they care. They care just because they like the gossip. You know, it's like somebody driving and bottlenecking to look at the accident just happened. You know, they're not looking because they care. Are they going to get out of the car and try to rescue? I mean, most people don't do that. They're just looking because the curiosity, it's something new, it's something to gossip about, it's something to talk about. And that's basically what we are. Gossip, pawns, you know. 
So anyway, that's what I wanted to say today. I hope you guys had a happy Thanksgiving. You know, to me, it's just another day, another another storyline in, in the timeline of humanity that we create history and, and pretend that things happen for the better of us when I realizing there's always puppets pulling strings or puppeteers pulling the puppet strings in the background. Um, I think we could say that life is not the same place or the world is not the same place that we've been used to from childhood. Things are changing very quickly. Things are being exposed very quickly. People's true natures are shining through and there's just a lot of craziness going on in the world. Transsexuality is a very small problem in the scheme of things. We have bigger fishes to fry. And I think eventually people will just get tired of this and just kind of like put it to the side and then everything will balance itself out. In the meantime, have a great remaining every Sunday. I love you guys. But remember to always love yourselves too and each other. Bye-bye.